Hello and welcome back. So Jordan Bennington is officially on my goaltending never again list. Uh, so if you watch the channel, I don't like to make rash decisions. I like to go over the data, look through the pros and cons, and try to make a better, more informed decision about what I'm, what's going on on my fantasy team. So we're going to do that today, and I'm going to explain why Jordan Bennington is not a good fantasy goalie and really isn't an NHL starting goalie and never has been. So let's first determine what is a good G1 or even a G2 in fantasy. Um, if you remember back, this was the goalie targets video. This was the exact slide that I used with some markings on it now uh, to kind of explain this point. But Jordan Bennington did not meet these criteria at the time. And yet in the next slide that I used in that video, he was listed as a G1. So let's see exactly what I said about that decision. Bennington, I'm almost ashamed to put him on this list, but if you look at it, um, He's going to be the number one. I mean, there's he's got Thomas Grice as his backup. Um, you know, I've never used Bennington. He had one three or four month stretch of elite play that led St. Louis to the Cup, but otherwise he's been average at best and not really a reliable fantasy option in my opinion. Um, the reason he's on here is because the St. Louis Blues are a top five team in the West and they're returning almost exactly the same team. Now Bennington will get 50 starts this year, no matter what. He's going to be the number one. He's nowhere near a 915, though. Uh, his team suppressed shots last year at the exact midpoint, so 16th overall, which is a gray area as to whether or not he qualified in the preseason. But they're currently 22nd in shots against per game, which does not mean that they qualify anymore. Uh, are the Blues a team that can get 40 wins? Well, not without league average goaltending, which they're not getting right now. And last year they were a 40-win team, but they made up for Bennington's struggles with Huso. And now Huso's gone Grice is the backup, and he's not a 1B. He's a backup. So um, lastly, I added a very crucial element at the bottom to this list, and that's something uh, that I talked about a little bit in the video, but it's consistency. And that can make or break your fantasy team's uh, goaltending, especially if you're in a categories league. Now, Sergei Bobrovsky was the originator of the goalie do not own list or the goalie never again list. Uh, and I've talked about him as a do not draft many times in the preseason, and I said I'd lay out the case, but I haven't yet. So let's, let me explain why Bobrovsky sucks. Now, there are many reasons why Bobrovsky sucks, technically speaking, and all that stuff. I'm only going to go into one thing at this point in time, and that's consistency. So I owned Bobrovsky in 2018-19, and I drafted him in the second round. And therein lies the problem, a problem I've since corrected and passed on to you. Don't draft your goalies in the top two or three rounds. Now, that particular year, I drafted McDavid first, and I drafted Pasternak uh, at the back end of the snake in, with my third overall pick. This year, I have McDavid and Pasternak again. Uh, that year, in 2018, I finished 10th out of 10 teams. This year, I'm in second, and I'm in a grudge match against my arch rival for first place this week. So, what happened? Did Bobrovsky have an awful year that year? No, for my fantasy team, he got me 25 wins, a 2.52 goals against, and a 9.15 save percentage, and five shutouts. So it sounds pretty good, right? But here's the problem, and it's more of a problem in category leagues than points leagues, but the, the problem is consistency. If you look at the numbers, he is great you know, when he's playing his game, but literally once or twice per week, he'd give up four goals in under 60 minutes or less, and that would ruin my goals against and save percentage for the entire week. Um, so if you're looking at the raw numbers, the 30,000 foot view over here, you'd say, well, he's not bad. Maybe he's a G1. He's playing on a good team in Florida. I'll go and draft him. But then you look at the game log and you see basically every week he's putting up a horrible game that ruins your goaltending stats. And that was something that drove me nuts and drove me to the bottom of the league standings that year. And I also drafted him in the second round, which means I missed out on the offensive talent that could have potentially overcome that disadvantage. Uh, and ultimately, I only won two weekly uh, goal uh, categories. So for that season, the only times I won it twice was there. I forget which weeks, but there was two weeks where I won goals. And that's something that I could have potentially found in the second round of the draft. But I didn't because I picked Bobrovsky. Now, as we get back to Bennington, um, I picked him up off waivers. So why am I dropping him already? Well, let's look at the short term and the long term reasons. So short term it's pretty simple. He's been at the extremes on both ends. Extremely good to start the year, then extremely bad for a week, and then extremely good for three weeks, 
then extremely bad for two weeks. So bad that you literally can't play him anymore because he's giving up four to six goals every game and he's killing your goals against and save percentage. Now, I do understand that in points leagues where you get something for total saves or whatever, he may still have a tiny bit of value, but in category leagues, he definitely does not. Now, let's look at the longer term picture. You can see here in 1819 for 32 glorious games, he was an elite number one goalie. 189 goals against, 927 save percentage, 24 wins and 30 starts with five shutouts. The following year, when he was being drafted as a G1 for the first time in fantasy, he was below 915, barely hit the 50 start threshold. 30 wins, which isn't bad at all, but you know, it's definitely about half as good as the previous season. Then you look at 2020-21, and that was the year that they traded Jake Allen, who was their 1B, thus essentially giving the reins to Bennington, and he put up slightly lower save percentage, even fewer starts and wins, and no shutouts at all. And then last year, his numbers fell off a cliff, 3.13 goals against and a 901 save percentage, and he lost the starting job to Billy Huso, who basically saved the season for the Blues, got them into the playoffs, and took them uh, to six games against the Cup champions. Now, they did switch goalies in that playoff matchup, but it was Huso that got them there. And then they let him walk in free agency, and for the second time, Bennington becomes the starter. And this is what I kind of don't understand. If you're looking at the progression, he's clearly heading in the wrong direction. Um, this year, he's at an 889 save percentage, a 342 goals against. And despite some of those quality starts you saw in the game log on the previous slide, there's a very clear trend in the downward direction. And it backs up what I was saying in the preseason. Outside of that 30-game stretch when he first entered the league during that cup year, Bennington is not really a starting NHL goalie. He, at best, would be a 1B. Uh, he's not even a 1A at this point, especially not a G1 or a G2 in fantasy. But does that mean he's not ownable at all? Should you not stream him? Well, let's take a look at some advanced stats. Now, Bennington is in some awful company when it comes to both goals saved above expected and wins above replacement. Basically, anybody on this list is not a viable fantasy option if you want to win your fantasy league. The only goalie out of either of these groups that I would potentially take a shot on would be Demko, and that would be based on what he did last year, not based on this year or the strength of the team defense. And basically, everyone else that you see on either of these lists is a guy I wouldn't even stream in fantasy unless I was extremely desperate for like one game. Now for Bennington, the low and medium danger shots aren't necessarily a problem, but the high danger chances are. So Bennington is the sixth worst save percentage uh, in terms of high danger shots against at .664. So essentially 66% of the time, two thirds, uh, he's stopping the puck on a high danger chance. But St. Louis has actually done a pretty decent job limiting those. They're 11th best in the league, only giving up 79 high danger shots this year. But one of the telling stats that indicates to me that Bennington is now essentially a backup in terms of his high level of play is when you look at the bottom right, this is how he performs with one, two, and three plus days of rest. So when he isn't relied on to start all the time, he's actually playing really well. But when he only gets one or two days of rest, he's not performing like a starter. Now, he may actually be ownable in fantasy if he's on three days of rest because he's got a two uh, two wins out of four starts, two five three goals against, and a nine nineteen save percentage. But the NHL is a league where you basically play every other night if you're the starter, and that means one to two days of rest max. And you can clearly see how his play dips uh, when you remove the rest days. And this is something that you can actually see with the eye test. So right now, Bennington's getting angry and frustrated. You see him lashing out on the ice. You hear Craig Berube telling him to sh shut up and just stop the puck. His antics are kind of distracting. And these are the signs of a goalie who shouldn't be playing this many games, but he has to because of his contract and the lack of backup support. So what do you do if you own Bennington right now? Well, full disclosure, I tried to drop him in the middle of the Rangers game last night. I ended up dropping him early this morning. Uh, if your league size doesn't allow you to do that, Keep him on your bench for the foreseeable future. Maybe only start him if he's on three plus days of rest. If you check out the splits tab on Yahoo Fantasy desktop version, you can see how he's performed against each team this year. So he's played the best against Anaheim. He's 2-0 with a 1-5-0 goals against and a 9-50 save percentage. Against Edmonton, he's 1-1 with a 1 goal against and a 9-60 save percentage. And against Chicago, one game played, one win and a 926 save percentage. And he surprisingly actually played a great game against Colorado where he made 45 saves and had a 957 save percentage. 
If you look at his play versus the Central Division, he's 2-1 and one with a 233 goals against and a 928 save percentage. And in 11 games against the Western Conference teams, he's 8-3 with a 238 and a 924. But when you're looking into why that's the case, you can look at team goals four, and three Central Division teams are the three worst in the league, and that's Arizona, Chicago, and Nashville, and then Anaheim is fourth, who he plays very well against. So interestingly enough, I covered this in a video last week, St. Louis is seventh worst in goals four per game, uh, and they're number one in terms of goals four differential from last year to this year. Essentially, they lost about one goal per game from last year to this year. So in addition to performing like essentially a backup goaltender would, uh, and struggling against Eastern Conference teams, apparently, Bennington isn't getting the goal support that he and Huso might have gotten last year. So all of this is a recipe for disaster and fantasy. And the longer you ignore the signs, the longer you're going to suffer. And I'm completely out on Bennington. He now joins Bobrovsky in the never again list. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Remember to like and subscribe, follow Data Draft on Instagram to get some daily updates and shorter content. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can visit the Patreon link in the description below and access all of the charts that I use in the videos. And also you can access the private Discord where you can use me as your personal data analyst for fantasy hockey and let me make the, work, the data work for you. But that's going to do it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.